Oh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to talk to you this morning about the work we've done on the uh, Create Roads, what, we, what we're calling Enhanced Create Roads. So I've sort of been testing this new feature of version 11 out with the help of Richard, who's been uh, coding it for us. For those that don't know, Create Roads, I always ask at my uh, What's New seminars, like, who has used Create Roads? Because predominantly down in Victoria, we've got a quite a uh, huge user base that are working in like land development. And it surprises me every time that not that many people use Create Roads. It's a fantastic tool if you've got particularly a greenfield site to set up like your subdivision really quickly and set up the strings. Okay. So what is it? It's basically a function in 12D model to create the left and right hand edges of the roads. You create curb returns and it creates any intersections and cul-de-sacs you might need. What do you need to run this function? Just simply a model of center lines that are graded. So they've got to have some type of vertical geometry to them. And of course the string names must be unique. So what extra parameters can be used? The center lines can then be tagged with the width of roads. They can have their left and right turn radii altered from a default value and the definitions of any cul-de-sacs put in. So there we go, that's all we need to run create roads, it's just an initial network of center lines. And after we run create roads, we just get a collection of strings like that, including like any intersections we need to uh, produce. I'm just gonna show you uh, what the old panel will look like if you've ever seen it before, had the pretty picture on the side. We've now lost that pretty picture in the new one. But yeah, it's now we can actually run templates as well as snippets. Snippets being probably the buzzword of this design, these design sessions with Mick and the like. Yeah, we, it, the old one we were limited to running just templates and modifying templates through Create Roads. Now you've got the option down here on the new panel of running snippets. And I'll do a live, live demonstration of it in a, in a sec. With the old panel of Create Roads, we had this panel that used to help you go and set up the Create Roads. So what this was doing was it was applying attributes to the center line of your road, basically for the width of your road and any curb returns you had at the end of the road. What we do now in the new panel is we don't use this panel at all. Basically, when you pull up your uh, model of center lines, basically in the panel, it comes up with this grid box here and then you can adjust all the widths of your roads and your widths of your roads and whether you've got like cul-de-sacs at the start and at the end and whether those roads are frozen etc. So it's not a separate panel. With the old panel it was fantastic for its day but it did get dated when smart changes came in. Smart changes as you see on the right hand side, now the new panel writes everything in smart changes, so you haven't got this sort of ugly uh, change section on as we, we had on the old, the old panel on the left hand side. Okay, as I said before, oh, actually with the old panel too, we had a uh, full width template that you used to put in. You used to put in a carriageway template, so that was basically when you go past an intersection and a curb only one. At the moment, with the new one, basically you just put in, you can put in a road carriageway for the right, a road carriageway for the left, you can put in a curb template, and basically you nominate the lip of curb name, and basically 12D will trim those string, strings out of it automatically back to that lip of curb string name. So you haven't got the opportunity of putting in like a carriageway template anymore. The old panel had quite a limited set of default values. The new panel's got a lot more uh, default values you can add, particularly for the cul-de-sacs. You can, you can start putting in like, yeah, default values like bulb radiuses and left, left and right radiuses and bulb offsets, just to have them as default. 
and they're just an extra tab on the uh, panel. With the old one, you used to, basically with Create Roads, you run Create Roads and then you might work on one particular road. And you might uh, want to freeze that road, which means that you don't want Create Roads to go and uh, destroy all your work and change the MTF file you may, may have altered. The, the problem with the old one was basically if you wanted to, um, if you did some work around like a curb return or a cul-de-sac or something, you had to freeze the whole road. Now you've got the option in the new one of just freezing. You can freeze a road, yeah, but you can also freeze the uh, curb return, like the left curb return or the, the right curb return and the cul-de-sac. You can freeze those individually, which certainly helps because sometimes, yes, you're just modifying like a curb return. Okay, I'm going to jump into a... A demo. So I've just pulled up the um, the new training data that we're going to be using, and I'm just going to run a, a create roads over the top of that, or a, a enhanced create roads over the top. So let's go into create create roads enhanced, and I've set up a function already for this. So basically, to talk you through this, I've got a model in there of super alignments that are all graded and they're basically, it's just in a, in a center lines model called a line. My natural surface is a tin in there that's just called ground. And what I'm going to do first is just show you the, the um, templates way. And I've created, I've got a couple of templates in here, one for road and one for curb. I'll just show you what a road one looks like. It's just a simple template that runs across. It actually puts a center line string in there. We've got a width of three and a half meters, cross fall minus three. And they're all my names for my particular curbs and, and strings that make up my template. So I've entered all those things in and the curb naturally hasn't got the, uh, the first link in it to the, if I show you the curb. It basically just starts from the lip of curb and goes out. Okay, before I run this, I just we've got another um, panel here called defaults, and I always like to check my defaults. In this subdivision I'm doing, the road width by either side of the center line I've put in is 2.7. I've got a section separation of five, and you can see the other ones that are there, the other default values I'm using. A curb radius is gonna be set to a default of 10. And I've also put in some information about the cul-de-sacs, a bulb radius of nine, the left and right radius. So it's going to use those values as, as defaults. When I load my center line in, it actually populates this panel or this grid down the bottom. So I've got full access now. Rather than use that old panel to go around and apply attributes to particular center lines, now I can do it through this panel here. So let's finish off some of these ones. So, CO, this one here, the top one there is this, this road that runs around here. I can actually say, it's identified that already that I've got an intersection there and it's asking me, do I want a cul-de-sac at the end? So there's only one free end of my string. So I can say if I want a cul-de-sac on it, it's just a matter of going down to, to yes. I've got options here to change my left road width and my right, right road width. In the uh, template I had, I just had a default value of three and a half in there, but it's actually gonna use the default value of 2.7. That's the one it's, it's, it's gonna use, unless I type something different in here. The cul-de-sac, as you see, once I put that in, it took the values from default. I'm just gonna take out these ones, the left and the right width because this road's going to be 2.7 and I wanted to drag it in from the, the default values. If I take a look at the second road here, which is this road that runs right around the outside, that's sort of a collector road, so I'm just going to change the width of that road to 4.7, so trafficable lane and a bit of parking. So I'm going to alter from the 2.7 that I used in default. 
Likewise, the next one, this road here is a bit of a collector as well. I'm also going to make that 4.7. And this last one here is this little one that runs up in this section here. So it's asking me cul-de-sac at the end, and I'll just put yes. And I won't worry about touching the left and the right road width, but I'm happy with the 2.7. 2 Go into the cul-de-sac. And again, I'm just going to take these out. So now I'm ready to, to run this thing. I'll just show you the outputs page or the outputs tab. Basically, these are the models that a 12D is going to put this in. Yeah, I'll just set it up to the way I work, to, to my standards. I'm going to apply a, um, apply a map file to this on the fly as well, just new. All that's doing is it's just changing all my sections to a yellow color so you guys can see them. Otherwise, they come out in a dark blue color. I'm just going to leave those. I've got my boxing. So this Create Roads will, not only will it do your, do your finished uh, finish surface, so all your, your road strings, the, the design surface road strings, it'll also do boxing for you on the fly as well. So as you can see, I've put some boxing in there, some boxing layers, and I've got a boxing file nominated, and I'm basically going to put two layers of boxing in. I'm going to put one for the uh, asphalt and another one down at the bottom of subgrade. That's what most people do when they tend to do subdivisions. So that should run and that should create the boxing for me on the fly as well. Next one along is tins. I'm going to create a tin of this on the fly as well so that all the roads I produce are going to form a tin called tin design. I've got a nulling angle and a nulling length specified and oddly enough that nulling angle is not in degrees I found out, it's actually in radians but we'll sort that one out as well. And we've also got a seed point that I've nominated. And that basically says anything outside those particular roads that I create, what it'll do, it'll, it'll um, shrink the tin back to those, back to our roads. I've also got visualization happening on the fly. So I'm applying a texture mapping file to it as well. So you'll see that once I run. So enough talking, let's give this a bit of a run. Let's hit create. So away it goes and applies all the templates to those roads. It's, it's running templates around the curb returns that it's creating. It takes a little while, but it's amazing the amount of work it's doing. Because now it's colouring the visualisation, it's created the tin, it's done everything. So if I just redraw that, there you go, that's what that's produced, just based on the create roads function. So it's all visualised because I use the visualisation colours. What's also new is if I turn on the sections and strings that 12Ds produce through the create roads function, is now we actually do this area around the intersection. We make use of the new modifiers that we've got. So previously that section there on the uh, right hand side of any curb return, we never had sections in it. So it was sort of a blank place. And we used to just triangulate from the uh, lip of curb across to the centre line of the road and the, uh, the other lip of curb there. Now we're actually putting in sections around that area as well. If I just show you two, with those sections, if I turn on my boxing, in this view, if we take a look at one of the sections it's produced, it's created the boxing for me as well, so on the road, on the fly. So now if I, if I move one of those roads, update this, this create roads being a function, it'll update all those strings, including the boxing as well. I've also, with these, um, the way 12D produces these sectional strings now, on the inside of our curve return, I've also applied boxing there as well. So you can see that section there, half the road, coming across to there is all being boxed out as well. So I'm not missing that volume if I go and calculate some, some volumes. So that volume's clearly, clearly defined in there. Okay, what ha happens now if one of those, if you, if you want to do some work on some of, the, some of the strings, just turn off some of those strings and sections. 
Let's say we wanted to put a component in between uh, along this major road. Say we had a bus bay or something to put in. I'll just show you how to quickly tackle that under design, roads, components, place component, go to my component, which is a bus bay, no invert, pick the center line of my road. I know that road's 4.7 uh, wide and the change I want to put this in at Let's put it across the TP there. I don't know, about 440 or something. I'll just place that down. So it's created a uh, bus bay for me there. And I can finish that. I could have modified that bus bay. So that bus bay, most of you have seen components before. That bus bay is super alignment. So what we need to do now is we need to tell tell our function about that particular um, string that we've put in. So if we just take a look at the function, it's this one here, apply RS to AO1 being that road. So what I'm just going to do for that, first off is just, I'm just going to run it, make a tin out of that. I always like to do that when I change them. Copy that. run that the way it is. So what I need to do is add in some modifiers into my MTF. So if I take a look at my MTF, I've actually got a new one here. I'll show you, I've added two lines to the MTF. So what you'll see from the MTF now is that it's all set up with smart changes. So no more of their like fixed changes in there. So if you don't know how to use smart changes, a good way to start is by having a model of center lines and grading them and running create roads and just checking out how it all works. So it, um, if, you, if you're not flash with, with smart changes, this is a great tool to, um, to learn smart changes. So what I've done is I've thrown in two extra lines here, number five and number six. What they do, the first one here is basically parallel to a string. And what it's doing is it's saying from my lip line to my back of curb, over the length of my bus bay, let's make the, uh, the cross sections run across there to create my curve. So perpendicular to this, um, this string I've got. And the next one down is the footpath. I don't want the footpath kicking out in that area to be inside these lots. I want to have the footpath run along my boundary. So what I've done is used a uh, ab fixed absolute modifier there. And I've said that the, uh, the, the footpath is a standard 8.5 metres off the centre line of my road. So I've specified that. So anyway, that's the MTF. Just the two extra lines in it. Quit out of that. And now I'm going to run this. So I'll just, I can bring on a, uh, a super tin as well. Turn off my design. Throw on my super tin. So I've got a raster image of our training data that you'll get to know, I'm sure. So I'm just going to run this function here, apply. So I've rerun that road one function going up there. I'm going to run the create roads function now as well. And it prompts me, it tells me because I've got this prompt before freezing, it knows I've done work on road one. So it won't let me, um, because I've got prompt before freezing, It'll prompt me and tell me that, hey, you've worked on road one, and it's asking me a question like, do you want to freeze any the, the last changed item? And of course I do, because I've done work on it. So off it goes and it recalculates create roads. And of course it's got road one frozen. So there you go. I've just updated my, uh, just redrawn my view, and there's my new bus bay in there. It's part of Crate, crate Roads, freezing out that road. Um, as I mentioned before, if I wanted to look at, say, one of these curb returns, if I wanted to 12D create some, I've, I've just put them under DES returns, and creates this magenta string. So this is a, 
a 10 meter string, 10 meter radius string. I, if I wanted to alter that, and I'll give it a whirl, the, um, one of the new fixed compounds that we've got. At the moment, it's a curb type. What I'm gonna do is use one of the newer ones. I'm gonna put in a basic turn, give that one a go. Fixed string, fixed string. Radius, minus 15. I'll give it an approach taper length of say 40 meters and the approach taper offset 3.5. I'll set that and I've got to give it the strings that it applies to. So offset, I know that's minus 4.7. Go down here, do the same thing. So it's created that new um, string for me. So that's the basic turn that we've, we've got working now. Just gonna uh, finish that one. And now I'm gonna, uh, for, for RS, for this particular road, I'm gonna turn off the uh, start curb. I'm gonna freeze these manually. It would prompt, it would, it would prompt me for that if I tried to run it now you've got the option of ticking those boxes as well. I'm just gonna freeze both. I like to freeze, you know, if I work on one, I freeze, usually freeze both. And just now I'm just gonna hit create, run this through. And you should hopefully see this curb return in here change in a minute to the basic. Off we go, I redraw the view, and there we go. There we've got a basic turn in there. So I didn't have to freeze any roads to do that. I, I could just freeze that one curb return. Right, the next one, I know we're pushing it for time here now. The next thing I wanted to show you too was, let's, let's try this thing by snippets. So I've just created these basic snippets for a, a road on the left side, or, or, or just basically it's a road template or a road snippet, and I'll just show you this um, snippet. That's all it looks like. So this one here is just a dummy line in there to send the code down to a, um, uh, send, the, um, uh, send the string down to a section, uh, another section of code that actually makes use of the layers. So I can use this last interface command. But you can see here, the way I've put in the snippet, basically I've just put in, I've just added, inserted strings. So it's a very simple one. So that's just for the, uh, the, the road on the left. It uses that same template because it's optional on the right. So it'll use that one there. The intersection one, very similar to that as well. If I open up that, all I'm putting in here is a center line and a, and a curb line. The curb left, so this is on the left hand side of the curb, I've got just a, uh, if I open up that, just another one, very, very similar to the road template except it hasn't got that first link. So as a net result of all that, I can just hit create, it's going to go over the top of all my, my other strings that I've created via the, uh, the templates and what I should expect I should expect to get the same, the same thing that I've already got produced by templates. I'm now producing it via snippets. So away we go. Zoom out. And there you go, if I redraw that. You don't see any change because it's the exact same thing run by snippets rather than templates. And why is that good? Because that was a, just a rough, or, or just an easy template that I, uh, sorry, a snippet that I put in just inserting design layers. So in the, um, in the design layer that Mick talked about yesterday. What you can do now is you can actually apply some of your meshes and some of your shapes as part of that snippet as well. So I've got a, a, uh, another one as well where if I just add some of these ones, I rode on the, the road intersection one, the curb left and curb right. 
And I'll just show you one of these ones. They're very similar to the last one I had up. So similar up to the stage where I put in the interface tin. But now I'm using some of Mick's snippets down here that he talked about yesterday. And I think Peter this afternoon will tell you how to set up those particular snippets. So this is all I'm doing. I'm only putting in how many lines there? Probably seven or eight lines in there. I'm just calling these snippets to create shapes for my curves, asphalt for my road surface, crushed rock underneath my asphalt, crushed rock underneath my curves. I just add that to my particular snippet. And you can see there I specify depths as well. So I've got a parameter of depth in there as well. And when I run that, I'll just switch this off for a sec. Because it will be no longer a super tin, it'll be, just be all meshes. And I'm just going to turn off the, um, the cul-de-sacs as well. And give that a run. And you'll notice this runs a bit slower because it just the, by the amount of work it's doing, it's, it's doing fantastic, like a, a lot of work creating all these meshes. So it's really, you know, doing a lot of work for you. So just before I run that, I usually crank up my uh, iTunes toolbar. Has anyone ever seen that in, uh, in 12D? So I've created an iTunes toolbar. So I get that pumping. So that toolbar I wrote, you can actually um, skip your songs without even getting through, get out, getting out of 12D. So I, oh yeah, bit of highway to hell. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I usually put that on before I run this thing, and off I go. So it's going to do a heap of work for me. So if anyone wants to copy of that, I'll. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it on the forum or something. So, just means you don't have to flip out and into to, to uh, iTunes if you don't like the song that's playing. So, I just kept it pretty basic with a play and a forward skip and a back skip at the moment. So it's still running, chomping out these these meshes. So you do want to get this right before you start adding your meshes. So you can comment them out in your snippets, get your top design surface sorted properly, and then call in all your meshes. Because it probably takes like, we complain about it, but you know, it's probably taken less than a minute to do all that. So it's finished now. So it's created loads and loads of meshes for me. So all different layers of um, material. I wrote myself a little chain to switch them on. So Add mesh chain. Oops, oh, I won't bother showing you that. I'll just go add mesh chain. I'll just run it. I'll just add all my meshes to, to view number two. Yeah, I didn't unfreeze those those roads. Anyway, I won't run won't run it again. Should have unfrozen those roads. Yeah, I actually forgot about that. But anyway, yeah, all these things now are meshes in my design. So if I take a look at some of these, when I go in there, it's a bit hard to navigate in there. But they're now all meshes. It's probably easier if I grab a section up, add it to my section view. So I add all my meshes to my section view, switch on um, some of my road sections. And you'll see the uh, all my meshes and shapes come through on my section view. So, you know, with a couple of extra lines in your in your snippets that you're running through Create Roads, you're getting these this extra value that's there. And I'll just check. It's hard to orbit. Can't zoom out. What it does too, I can do a uh, like a two-point profile as well, like through a an intersection.
dodgy mouse. I can't get the end of it. And so what it's done is if I zoom into here, it's taken a cut for me right across the intersection. So you can see that all the uh, layers of material and stuff uh, work right across my intersection as well. So anyway, the moral of the story is, is um, yeah, just have a go at Create Roads. And um, yeah, now that you have got the option of applying snippets, yeah, it's a really, really good and fast tool to generate your strings, generate your boxing, and also generate these new shapes and meshes that people are talking about. Because they'll put these, the, the uh, snippets for the, for the uh, meshes that I've just used, they'll be in the library for you guys to use. So as long as you're using the, the naming convention, the string naming convention, they should work and um, yeah, produce nice sections and things like this for you. Thank you.